Hello all, so today we're going to be watching Cells and Functions Part 2, talking about movement through the cell membrane. So everything living must maintain homeostasis, a stable internal environment, no matter what's happening inside or outside. Survival depends on its ability to maintain the proper conditions. It needs glucose, it needs amino acids, lipids, to actually build and keep its function going. Now the plasma membrane, also known as the phospholipid bilayer, and also known as the cell membrane, so three names, is the boundary between the inside of the cell and its external environment. Now to maintain homeostasis, we must be maintaining the cell's environment, allow nutrients to enter, or remove it. We need to allow waste and other products to also leave. Now this plasma membrane is selectively permeable, which means it only allows certain things in or certain things out. It's selective of what it will allow to pass. Now the structures of the plasma membrane is mainly composed of lipids, specifically phospholipids. Now lipids are insoluble, which means they do not dissolve in water. So if we took water and added oil, it would not combine together to make a solution. Again, they're composed of phospholipid bilayer, which has two layers of phospholipids. Uh, they have it from end to end, or tail to tail. Now, a phospholipid has certain parts. The head, or one end, will be a phosphate group, and attached to them is a glycerol backbone, and then two fatty acids. So, here is one of our phospholipids. Again, we're going tail to tail in our phospholipid bilayer, meaning two layers. And then we have our head on the outside end. Now the head, or the phosphate groups, are going to be polar, which means they have a positive and a negative piece. Now this allows them to be hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water, philic meaning loving, which means that these can touch water. Now the nonpolar, or the hydrophobic, meaning water fear, fatty acid tails cannot touch water. So water cannot touch the tail, therefore it will not move through. Now that goes for polar material as well. Nonpolar tends not to really want to interact with polar molecules. So this makes a very good barrier for keeping items out and keeping items in. So again, the makeup of the phospholipid bilayer has the head and the tail portion. The head is the phosphate group, it's polar, hydrophilic, meaning water loving, can interact with water environments, and the tail, which is nonpolar or hydrophobic, which does not interact with water or interact with polar molecules. This makes it a really good barrier. Now the fluid mosaic model. As we know, the plasma membrane is not rigid, it is not stiff, it is not one secure. Instead it moves and flows, which we call it the fluid mosaic model. The proteins, the lipids, and anything else in the membrane also can move through the membrane and move along it as well. Other components of the plasma membrane will be cholesterol. Cholesterol are going to be these little yellow guys here. And you see them scattered throughout the membrane. They help stabilize the phospholipids and prevent them from sticking together, the fatty acid chain. So to keep that fluidity in the fluid mosaic cell. Now there are proteins as well in the membrane. Here's a protein, here's a protein, here's another protein, here's another protein. There's four types that are in the membrane. We have cell surface, mar surface markers, which are basically name tags. We have enzymatic proteins that help with chemical reactions inside of the cell, transport proteins, which help things move through the membrane, and receptor proteins, which you have an activation site on one side, and it signals or triggers something else to happen inside of the cell. So again, transport uh, proteins, or known as channel proteins, have a hole going all the way through them that allows substances to move through freely. Next we have the markers, or the cell surface markers, 
which have carbohydrate chains attached to them. Now, each carbohydrate chain is sort of like a name tag. They can be different in different structures. So if you brush up against one of the cell surface markers, the other cell can recognize the sequence of carbohydrates and know that that cell might be an immune cell or that cell might be a liver cell. So the cell surface markers are going to be the name tags. Next we have the receptors, the protein receptors, which transmit information from the outside to the inside. Again, on the outside they have a receptor site for other molecules to come in and bind, and then it signals uh, the inside of the cell what to do. For example, we use a lot of these with hormones or chemical messengers that attach to the receptor site. Finally, we have the enzymatic proteins, which help with enzymatic activity and chemical reactions inside of the cell, specifically for metabolism a lot of the time. Okay, so let's take a look at each of the different types. So, we have a cell surface marker that goes all the way through, and then it has carbohydrate chains for identity recognition. So again, if something brushes up against it, they can tell by knowing what the cell surface marker says that this is going to be a liver cell, or this is going to be an immune system cell. Next for our receptor, we have a receptor site here on the outside and it sends a signal all the way through to release something inside that will cause the cell to do something. Finally we have our ch channel protein which are transport protein and it allows molecules to move through the membrane. Now when talking about protein we have two actual positions they can be in. They can be integral proteins, which means they go all the way through the membrane, and you can see them on both ends. Now for a peripheral protein, that's just going to be on the side, just like your peripheral vision is the side vision over here. So a peripheral protein only is on, on one side of the membrane and does not go all the way through. Well, that's all I have for you today. See you later.